Hey everyone. This time I wanted to talk a little bit about certainty versus visibility. There's just two concepts that we work with, right? This trade-off between uncertainty and ambiguity, and I, I will give you visibility whilst I have that uncertainty, versus I have absolute certainty that this thing is happening and, and we can be really clear that, yep, this is a goer. And so in, a, in the context of financial practices and financial data within organisations, Often people's experience of finance is that we, we have month-end process, we have annual budgeting process, we have annual um, year-end close process. So we have a lot of experience of certainty coming from the finance team. And if we are not part of finance and we're part of an, another, like a delivery part of the organization, often we don't have experience of getting visibility other than those points where we're really certain at the end of the month because we just added up all the time checks and therefore this is where it is. But when we're talking about delivering, um, when we're talking about trying to hit a forecast, all those sorts of things, it can be really, really valuable to have that visibility into intra-month rather than necessarily having to work on that monthly cycle, particularly if we're looking towards smaller pieces of work, um, faster iterations, shortened feedback loops. Like a monthly feedback loop to understand where your costs are at feels like a lot. It's a long process. It's a long time period to wait. We want to see how can we get some of those that feedback and those signals earlier so that we can adjust course and make sure that we land month end uh, rather than getting to month end and it kind of being a surprise every time. And so I wanted to just contrast a couple of different ways to approach this problem, right? So in the context of building certainty around our financial data, we might have timesheets that people fill out on a daily basis they increment their time against various projects. And then we add all those timesheets up at the end of the month, and that's where our costs land. And so we have that certainty because we're filling out. And so we might choose to monitor those timesheets on a week to week basis um, on an individual level, and then go through this process of bottom up building what the team has spent. And that's great. But I've also got another way that I like to work, which starts to take a slightly broader view. Uh, it drops the administrative overhead, and it still gives you a lot of visibility about where you're headed without the trade-off of having to be down in the nitty-gritty all the time. So in order to do this, you are going to get a lot of advantage if you have a stable team. That's one of the things that makes this stuff way, way easier. And so the method goes something like this. You get to the end of your two-week period, say, if we're looking at fortnightly finances or bi-weekly finances, and you ask that team, where did you spend your time? And I want it to be a 30-second answer across these three things. And maybe there's a bucket that says, and all the other stuff that came up that we weren't aware of. So we have an appreciation of, in that 30-second answer, how much time did we spend on the stuff that we planned? and how much was noise, how much am I getting distracted, and of the stuff that we planned, where did we spend our time? Was it third, 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 and no noise? Or was it like 5% on each of the things that we committed and actually a whole bunch of noise? And so when you get that 30 second answer, when you have a stable team that doesn't move, that's not working here, there, and everywhere, and being split up after projects and brought back into another multi-project environment, when you have those stable teams, you know that you have a regularity of costs around that team and you have a, a regularity and a predictability around the throughput of that team. And so you start to build this understanding of knowing roughly how much you, put, you can put in to get a particular output. So that helps you with your forecasting in the first instance. And you can have this two weekly reflection going on in the background where you say, do we actually spend our time where we expected? And every two weeks we're starting to understand are we getting close to hitting that forecast? Because when we add up those timesheets at the end of the month, we'll know for sure. But actually, let's take 30 seconds as a team to reflect on where we're at. Now, super, super simple tool. Works a lot better if you're already into this kind of, this whole mode of agile ways of working, of bi-weekly um, or fortnightly iterations. All that stuff helps, right? But essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to shorten the feedback loop. At the moment, we're working with monthly financial data that comes at the back end. It's a lagging measure. We only know after the fact. We only know after we've spent the money. And so that question about how do we, how do we 
bring those feedback loops in so that we are getting more frequent signals more often. And that doesn't mean micromanaging everybody at the team level because that's a whole bunch of administrative overhead, right? Let's go to the level at which we have a team that's relatively stable so that we have predictability of that cost. And then let's roughly apportion their time across those three or four things that they're working on. So you can start to see that stable teams, limiting work in progress, all of these other factors around good practice and ways of working help to reinforce making easier um, decisions and, and getting visibility of our finances intramonth rather than waiting that full month cycle and then having a surprise at the end. Um, now, when I've implemented this in the past, we have taken teams of, say, um, I want to say roughly 200 to 250 people working on a variety of work and maybe 10 project managers across that group. Um, we have taken their time from anywhere up to two or three days a week on finances that project manager is spending going through the numbers, we have shifted that to a conversation that takes maybe an hour or two across the group of 10 project managers and everybody walks away with their financial data and they have that predictability because that entire team of 250 people is roughly stable. We share that data in together and everybody's got that visibility and we walk away. So that's, that's the order of magnitude that is open to you, right? That is the size of the opportunity is two to three days a week times 10 project managers. So a full month's worth of people hours in managing your finance down to a conversation that takes 10 people, a couple of hours every two weeks. Huge difference, right? And so then you've got to make that, you've, you've got to start to make those links around how much time are we spending going through adding up those timesheets, apportioning like, making sure that we've got everybody's specific day rate, like building those bottom up numbers versus actually go to the level at which we have a stable team, understand in the 30 second view, where did you spend your time and apportion that across those whole teams. The other really cool thing is that when you take a stable team that includes your management overhead, then you're starting to apportion those management costs into your projects as well. And so it starts to get, get you out of that, that cycle of management as this administrative overhead, actually start to incorporate that in, and it then means that it becomes part of the conversation about improvement and uh, reduction of waste and productivity as well. So, I know I've dumped a lot on you. However, back to basics. We want to go from a lagging measure where we have certainty every month around finance towards a rhythm where we have visibility every two weeks. And if you have stable teams and you have a two weekly iteration cycle and you're able to have that conversation when you do your retrospectives and bring that in every two weeks, then that's awesome. And if you're not there yet, then start to ask those questions. At, at what level is our team stable? That we can start to go, here is the, the, the size of the team as a whole. Start to ask those questions about where are people spending their time? Just reflect on the last week or two of where you spent your time. And I don't want all of the detail. I want the high level as a team, not as individuals, and start to strip back and simplify some of those conversations. So you've got appreciation of a stable team. You've got that where, you, where you've got that predictability of cost. You've got that appreciation of where we're spending our time as a team, not down to the micromanager individual level. And then how do we make that stuff visible every two weeks so that we can get closer to understanding whether or not we're going to hit our month end figure and our forecast. So I hope that was super useful. I'd love to hear from you. As always, drop me a line, drop me a question. Um, if you go searching back through uh, some of the archives, I'm sure you will find um, the blog posts where I've documented this in more detail too. There's always pictures and things going around. I, I tend to revisit these topics um, because I find that people like to have different angles and different ways of looking at this. So the ideas out there, go back to the core. How do we, how do we take that certainty and move towards visibility and we will use those two types of numbers very differently right we will use those numbers where we're very certain for reporting out externally that's important but how can we start to shorten those feedback loops and get visibility so that we can adjust course in the process and start to get more predictable about where we're going to land at month end so i hope you enjoyed that um, and i hope wherever you are in the world today you're having an awesome awesome day thanks so much for listening and i'll see you again real soon